I predicted that my idea of virtual water would take 25 years to get to a point when it was an everyday idea which was automatically thought about when people were making water policy, and we're not quite there yet. Every water minister in the world knows about it, but it isn't automatically uh, an idea that people reach for. An idea doesn't immediately get adopted. It's only adopted at the pace at which the politics of society will allow it to be adopted. So I was so busy I didn't even publish the idea, because I did send it off to a, a water journal and one of the <coughs> one of the referees, we know a lot about referees, <laughs> refereeing this, <laughs> said it was a silly idea. Um, and so I was so angry, I just, I was so busy, I just didn't bother to publish. One of the reasons that I was a bit um, anxious about virtual water, embedded water, was that I knew that the oil industry and an army of ecologists had looked at embedded energy and had modelled it and thought about it and looked at it and at the end of five or eight years they just retreated exhausted, unable to, to, to analyse it effectively because it's full of fudges and subsidies and markets and deals and so on and regulation which doesn't make any economic sense. <laughs> so it wasn't until I had to explain the absence of armed conflict, and we've got someone from Palestine here, uh, <coughs> um, uh, armed conflict in the Middle East over water. That's remarkable because we've now got two or three times as many people, certainly in the Middle East and in the rest of the world, so the pressure on water resources is dramatically high. And then by chance I was looking at some food import data for Egypt and I realized, ah, oh, that's the reason. All you do when you run out of water is import food. Uh, if you haven't got the water, you can't grow it, so all you do is import it. The biggest demand management um, <coughs> measure which has been taken in human history with respect to water, with respect to anything that they would have consumed, is the Chinese one-child family policy. That policy has taken 300 million people out of the Chinese demographic um, story and 300 million people is 5% of the world's population. A ton of wheat takes 1,000 tons of water, 1,000 cubic meters. Uh, for a ton of beef, it takes 16,000. 16 times as much. So my message without any shame is we eat too much beef. And again, if you can reduce from being an overeating beef eater to being a veggie, you can move from 5 cubic meters a day to 2.5. But interestingly, there are very few seriously water surplus economies. We know that there are seriously surplus oil and gas economies in the main in the Middle East, um, and that worries us politically, and we will actually go to war and zap these poor places uh, because it's <coughs> elemental for we uh, people in the industrialized world to uh, keep the, um, the oil business in place. Uh, but there are only about 10 countries that are in a similar pivotal position with respect to food. And two of them are in North America, the um, United States and Canada. Uh, and the other place, of course, is South America, which is the water tower of the world. Uh, what, what the United States and, and, um, and, and Brazil do is a pivotal. There's no, <laughs> no, one, no political leader in the Middle East, uh, president of Egypt, I say, would stand up and say, do not worry, my people. We are short of food and, and water, uh, but we can easily import uh, food and then we'll be secure. Uh, they couldn't even begin to walk up the platform and make that speech because they knew, know they would be out of power the next day. So this is constructive knowledge. If millions of people will leave something, it counts more than uh, other things. Egypt uh, depends on the Nile. Um, and they've been, they, they've, that's come out of 5,000 years of experience. But I know, and if I had five sensible people, I could persuade them in three seconds that the future of Egypt is dependent on their capacity to have a diverse economy which allows them to have people earning 60k a year that allows them to import uh, virtual water. Yeah. And, you know, and everyone in the room I think, would be with that, but the constructive knowledge which every Egyptian believes is that they depend totally on the Nile. And the fact that they're now more than half dependent on the virtual water solution is not allowed into the discourse.